Hello, and welcome to this episode of Ubuntu Basics with me, Leo Tyndall. A couple things about this episode. One, you may notice that we're now in 1080p. Woohoo! So, yeah, go ahead and watch in 1080p. It'll help, believe me. The text will be sharper, it'll be easier to read what I'm doing, etc., etc. So, in this episode, I'm mostly going to talk about actually useful things to do with shell scripting. So, you can see I have a huge number of VirtualBox windows open here, and if I bring them up, we have some Windows XP boxes running. Essentially, what I'm going to do, these Windows XP boxes are on the same network as this Ubuntu box, so I'm going to show you a script which can be used to scan the local network, or I guess an internet, you know, a, a part of the internet, for devices. Now, it's mostly useful for our local subnets because it's extremely fast to get ping responses from them, but I'll talk about all that later. For now, just open up a terminal and let's get coding. So let's talk about first the basics of detecting hosts on the local network or on the internet. How do we do this? Well, there's a very nice command which is included in pretty much every operating system called ping. Simply ping. And you can see there's all kinds of options for this. Basically, this is so that you can use it to you know, set the packet size, set the count, the number of packets that you want to send, set how fast you want to send them, which interface you want to send them on, etc, etc, etc. So in this case we're just going to use the defaults of all of these except for count because we don't want it to send a huge amount. So let's try this. This is a host that I happen to know is up because I set up the network. Okay, so I'm pinging this host that I know is up and you can see that it sends a bunch of ping requests to it and we're getting a bunch of responses back. So what happened here is we did this, we did ping the IP address and it says how much data we sent and this is what we received, 64 bytes of acknowledgement from this IP address with these various properties including the latency which is very good to know and the TTL. And you can see this just happened over and over again because we did not set a dash i interval here, so if we do this we can go dash or rather a dash c, dash c one will only send one. So, and as you can see this is also a lot faster because it didn't have to send all these packets and wait for them to come back. So what we want to do here is we want to scan from 10.0.2.1 to 10.0.2.1 254. Now this isn't a command, I'm just typing it here to show you. So the reason it's this is because I happen to be on the subnet 10.0.2 and 10.0.2.0 is an invalid address and 10.0.2.255 is the broadcast address which means that that isn't a computer, it's used to communicate between all machines and for various other purposes. So we need to write a script that does this, because while we could do it by hand, 253 addresses is rather a lot to do, or rather 254 addresses is, is rather a lot to do by hand. So the first thing we need to determine for you is what subnet you are on. So we're going to go ifconfig, conf, I can't type, config, and you can see here we have two interfaces, LO, which is the local loopback, and you should never worry about this. This is just used to send things to the local machine, so don't worry about that. And F0, the Ethernet adapter, which in this case, of course, isn't a real Ethernet adapter because we're virtualizing, but whatever. So what is our address? Well, our address is 10.0.2.15, which is why I knew that host was up. <laughs> and as you can see, our broadcast address is 10.0.2.255, so that means we know that there isn't a computer. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to write a script that does this for us. So I actually have already written one, and I'll show it to you, and don't worry, I'll go through it line by line and explain everything. There we go, pingscan.sh. So the first line is, of course, telling the shell what program to use to execute this script, which is, in this case, slash main slash bash. Now the second line is something new that we haven't looked at before. It's an if statement. So all this does is it switches. So if whatever is inside these brackets is evaluated, and if that thing comes out to be true, then we go to the then statement and do whatever is between here and the else. 
And if it turns out to be false, we skip all this stuff, go straight to the else, and do this. And then, you know, this is the end fi right here. So if basically what this means is if dollar sign one equals no string, which means that dollar sign one is the first command line argument. So dollar sign zero is the name of the program, dollar sign one is the first command line argument, dollar sign two is the second command line argument, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So this means if this command was called with no arguments, then tell whoever called it how to use it because it can't be called with no arguments. That doesn't make sense. So ping scan.sh network. So for example, ping scan.sh 192.168.0. Right? And so we're just echoing those strings out to the command line so that people can see who run this. So, but if that's not true, if they did call it with an argument, we're going to do something called a for loop. Now, a for loop takes this variable here, x, which doesn't, it's nothing else, I just created it for this. You know, you can just x or y or whatever you want to call it. In then these back quotes, which is the tilde key on American, you, you know, United States keyboards. In back quotes, sequence, which is a command, 1, 254 and back quotes. So what the back quotes mean is run this command and use that output. Sequence, what that does is it takes the first and second arguments and prints all the numbers in between them. And the semicolon means, okay, we're done with the for statement. Now there's do. Well, what are we doing? We're doing ping dash c1, which I showed you before. It only sends one packet. It doesn't do it continuously. Dollar sign one, so the first three octets, 192.168.0, for example. Point, and then x. So what this loop basically does is it takes these octets here, 192.168.0, or whatever we put in, puts them here, so 192.168.0 point whatever the current thing in the sequence is from 1 to 254. So 192.168.0.1, 192.168.0.2, etc, etc, and until it's done. I'm going to go ahead and control O, save this, control X. Now, if you just type that in, remember that you're going to have to chmod plus X ping scan dot sh to allow you to execute it. I already did that, so I'm just going to show you dot slash ping scan dot sh 10.0.2. And there we go. So you can see it's beginning to scan, and look at all this messy ridiculousness. I cannot read this. I can't. Like, I, you know, I could go through it and, and sort of pick through it and say, oh, this is this and this is this, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit Control-C a couple times to exit out of this script. Um, all right. Doesn't want to exit. There we go. So I'm going to scroll up, and let's look at some of the successful ping reports, because that's all we want. All we want is the successes. We want to know how to identify the successes from the failures. Well, we know that it says 0% packet loss. Okay, um, so we could use grep, which is what I want to use to sort through this data. We could use grep, but we'd only get this line, and that doesn't have the IP in it. But what does this line have that has the IP in it? What does this line have that isn't in common with the failed lines? Well, it says 64 bytes received from this IP, and it has all this information that we want to know. So we can just grep for 64 bytes, because it appears at the beginning of each one of these lines, as you can see, 10.0.2.2 has that too, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so 64 bytes, and we will get that line only. And then from the ones that it didn't work, you know, from the ones that aren't up, you can see there is no 64 bytes in these lines, so it won't be a problem. So I'll just scroll back down here to my command prompt and nano ping scan dot sh. This is a very simple one. We just pipe. So all the output from ping instead of going to us goes to grep, which we type grep quote 64 bytes. Boom. So there we go. And control O, enter, save that out, control X, and let's run that again. So as you can see, there isn't immediately all kinds of garbage showing up on the screen, just these three hosts, which turn out to be up. And in a few moments, it'll finish with all the others and come up with 10.0.2.15, which is us, but I'm going to cancel it. So now what? Well, let's talk about the output. So 64 bytes, what does that mean? 
pretty much nothing unless we set the byte count to higher and it came back as lower, which is something you can do. It means that uh, something is kind of messed up in the connection or on the other machine, or that they're doing some sort of filtering. 10.0.2.2, or the IP. Well, clearly this just tells us which IP it is. So this long list of IPs will tell us exactly what hosts on the network are online and which ones aren't. ICMP sequence, don't worry about that. Time to live, also don't worry about this. It can be useful in other types of scripts, which I may talk about later. Time, what does this mean? Well, time, you may be familiar with milliseconds of lag from gaming. If you play League of Legends, for example, or any other Dota-type game, you'll know that the more milliseconds you have of ping, the more lag you have. Well, these hosts, because they're actually on the same physical machine as me, since they're all virtualized, you can see down here, Windows XP, Windows XP, etc., etc. So, since they're all virtualized, they have an insanely low ping time. But on a real network, these pings will be a lot higher, one milliseconds probably being the absolute minimum that you will ever see. Uh, it might be less if it's a very nice network, I suppose, but it, it's kind of unlikely. So, what that means is that if you see a whole long list of machines that have, you know, time equals 12, time equals 15, time equals 31, maybe, you know, a, a, a distribution from like 30 to like 10, maybe, or something like that, and suddenly you see one host that's, you know, time equals 200 milliseconds, well, all right, you know that clearly that host is somewhere, um, it, it's, it's logically on the same network, you know, you can connect to it on the same network, but either it's under a huge amount of load and is taking it a ridiculous amount of time to respond to the packets that it's getting, or it's very far away physically, and so the packet has to pass through multiple switches and possibly multiple other machines to reach that machine, so you know that something weird is going on there. Also, if you see that, you might want to be careful, because that machine is probably behind some kind of IPS, you know, intrusion protection or intrusion defense system, or has some kind of is being used as a honeypot possibly and therefore has all kinds of logging devices in front of it and things like that. So I hope this small tutorial has been able to demonstrate the kind of possibilities that shell scripting offers. Since you can run any command from a shell script, you can do pretty much anything. Now this kind of results from a larger network would be massive and would tell us all kinds of very useful things about the topology of the network. Especially if we were to modify the script, for example, to instead of scanning simply the final octet, a class C network, it could scan 10.0.y.x or something. It would get 10.0.0. whatever to 10.0.255. point whatever and it would of course take an extremely long time to execute but it would tell you a huge amount about all the networks in the building or corporate environment in which you were in. Now of course I would not recommend doing this on an unauthorized system or on any system where you're not supposed to be doing lots of traffic because it's super easy to detect. I mean, you're sending packets from your machine to a bunch of other machines and it will be in their logs and if anyone's on them and has a uh, terminal open looking at the incoming packets or at the logs, they'll see it. If there's logging software or intrusion detection systems, they'll see it. But it is useful if you just needed to, to, to determine the topology and composition of a network around you. I hope this has been useful. I'll see you again for episode 5. Until then, have a great day.